Lately, I have felt incredibly busy, which makes me feel overwhelmed. And I know I'm not the only one because I read all your comments. I have a real estate business. I have a team of agents. I'm in a training certification program. I have my own coaching business. I'm getting a new designation. I'm hiring. I'm training new team members. On top of all of that, I'm trying to figure out an alternative platform for hosting my community groups due to that unfortunate event of a few weeks ago, which I'm not even going to mention out loud because I don't want to spend one more minute of my precious mental energy on that. Now, I used to feel totally overwhelmed when I would look at all of the things that I needed to do, but then I realized something really important. The thought that I'm too busy is just a lie. I used to always say that there aren't enough hours in the day. I would catch myself saying that several times a week. I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't have enough help. I can't do that because I just can't fit it in. And because I always felt like I was behind the eight ball, I would never take time off for myself. We would go on family vacations and I'd work the whole time because I couldn't allow myself to relax and not work because I knew there was this huge to-do list of things that needed to get done. And so I felt guilty when I took the time off because I should have been doing that instead. I had this false belief of there's just not enough time. I have too much to do and not enough time to get it done. And I operated under this assumption for years and years. I even remember the productivity manager at our brokerage telling us that she put everything on her calendar because if it wasn't on the calendar, it didn't exist. And my reaction to that was, I could never do that. Like I need to have flexibility. I need to go with the flow. I need to have freedom. I need to do things that require creative brain power when the mood strikes. I can't plan to be creative in advance. So if I have a great idea, I would have to drop whatever I was doing and act on it right then and there. I was gonna film this video right now because the idea came to me. As a result, something that was on my to-do list would get pushed to the next day and then go to the next week and then go to the next month, and so on and so on. Can you relate to this? Do you have something on your to-do list that's been there for weeks or months and months like I did, and it just kept getting pushed off? Well, I finally said no more. I officially called BS on this idea that there's not enough time. And so today I wanna to help you overcome this limiting belief as well, because this has been a game changer for me. So let's dive into the strategy. Number one, you're going to keep track of everything that you do all day long during your working hours. From the moment you start working to the moment you stop working, you're going to write down everything that you did, whether it was personal time, eating lunch, sending emails, Recording a video, no matter what it was, you're gonna write everything down. I've done this exercise myself a couple of times and it's pretty eye-opening. There is so much wasted time on stuff that is totally unimportant. Things that would not make a difference to my business at all if they didn't get done or if they were delegated to someone else. So after you've done this exercise, you're gonna take all of these tasks and put them into four different categories. Things that you yourself will continue to do because you're great at it, you love it, it's a revenue generating activity, and you're really the only one who can do it. For me, that would be videos that I film for this channel, speaking engagements, meeting with clients to review contracts and negotiate offers. The second category is things that you can automate. Can you automate some canned responses for emails? If you find that you're sending the same thing over and over again, I'd say if you send it more than three times, you need to save it. Save it as a draft, as a canned response, save it as an email signature so that you can use it over and over again. Now we're just gonna copy and paste. No sense in writing this whole big long email out if you're continually sending the same message over and over again. It would also be amazing to do this with videos. So let's say that you get a new seller client. They have signed the listing agreement. What if you recorded little three minute long videos of all of the steps between signing the listing agreement and closing the transaction and you could set it up as an email campaign so that when the photographer is coming, it sends them an email. It's a little video that they can watch with all of the steps written out of 
open the freaking blinds and hey, dust them. That'd be cool. Could you put away the dog beds? Could you hide all of the pet paraphernalia so that they don't show up in the photos? You put everything that you need to say in this email, you save it as a template, and now you've got this great system that goes out to your clients. Such a huge time saver. And do you need to send those emails or can someone do it for you? Category number three is delegation. Things that need to get done, but they don't need to get done by you. Earlier on in my career, my managing broker said, if you don't have an assistant, you are an assistant. And I wholeheartedly agreed with him. It was a brilliant concept but I didn't hire anybody because I was afraid. I was afraid to pay the money. I didn't have any money. And how can I spend money that I don't have? And if I take a leap of faith, what if one day comes and I have no money and I can't pay them? The thought of hiring somebody and not being able to pay them stopped me in my tracks. And I didn't hire anybody for so many years. This is horrible thinking because I trained myself to be the only employee in the business. I taught myself how to do everything from making the videos to editing the videos, to blogging, to landing pages, to email campaigns, to managing the CRM, to marketing, to graphic design, to doing listing presentations and buyer presentations and negotiating the contracts. And when you do everything yourself, you start to tell yourself the age old story of Say it with me now, because I know you're thinking it. It would take me so long to explain to someone, I may as well just do it myself. Oh, good grief. How many times have I said that to myself? Tell me I am not the only one. I, I, I must have said it at least 100 times. And the more you tell yourself that story, the longer it will be before you ever have anyone to help you. You, If you're doing it yourself now, five years from now, you'll still be doing it yourself because you are telling yourself that story. And I get it because I told it to myself. Once I finally got over the fear of hiring people, it was so liberating. It was so wonderful to have people helping me on a daily basis. So I'm now learning how to be a true CEO. I hire people. I interview people. I fire people. I have difficult conversations. I'm by no means perfect, and I am definitely a work in progress. But learning that I have all of the skills inside me to be able to do these hard things has been so empowering and so liberating. It has done wonders for my confidence and for my mindset. The fourth category is my personal favorite, and that is elimination. Now, I eliminated Facebook, not by choice, but the fact remains that it's gone for me. And you have no idea how much time I have saved by not mindlessly scrolling social media, wasting time while telling myself that it's important because I need to see what all of my peers are doing. So you're going to itemize all of the things that you did for five days and then put all of those things into four different categories. Now you're going to sit down at the beginning of the week and time block everything onto your calendar. Now I revolted against doing this for so long. I didn't want to do it. I didn't enjoy doing it. I told myself it wasn't necessary, that it took too much time. Yeah. Well, how's that working out for you so far? It didn't work, which is why I always felt busy and overwhelmed. So now I like to time block my week out on Sunday. I'd make a brain dump of everything that I want to accomplish this week. First, I schedule in my personal time. I add in the yoga class that I want to go to three times a week. I add in dinner with my family. I add in a pedicure appointment every two weeks. I add in things that I do that fall under the personal care category and they go onto my calendar first because I am not going to work more than 40 hours a week. That is a personal commitment I have given to myself and to my family. And most of the time I'm able to get it done in 30 because I'm now much, much, much more efficient with my time. Next, I put in recurring appointments, things that happen every week, every two weeks, just put them in, schedule them right now, boom, done. Then I put in dedicated time to work on projects that need no distractions. So for example, I am batch filming right now. If I wanna batch film some videos, if I wanna write a few newsletter emails, if I wanna update blog posts, if I wanna write a new drip campaign for my CRM, if I have coaching calls or I'm going to be on a podcast or a live stream, all of those things go onto the calendar. And I try to put in an hour and a half but 
preferably two hours of focus time every single workday where I turn off the phone. I shut down the notifications. If the phone rings, I do not answer it. I turn on some music that puts me in the zone. Like I go to YouTube and I look for music to study by. And then I put in my Bluetooth earbuds and I just get into the zone. I am not distracted by social media. I am not distracted by the alerts going off on my phone. In fact, sometimes I leave my phone outside of the room and I shut the door. That way, even if it's lighting up, I can't see it. It's just outside the door, but it's not distracting me. And if I block out an hour and a half to film three videos, then I film three videos. And this is the part that is so helpful. You do not time block to work on a project. You time block to complete the project. For example, I'm writing my next book. I'm not going to time block two hours a day to work on the book. I time block two hours to write chapter one. Do you see the difference? When you give yourself a specific chunk of time and the goal is to complete a task within that block of time, 99% of the time you actually get it done. You've told your mind that you're giving yourself two hours to get it done. So when the alarm goes off, it's done. And this is extremely effective. This is a great, great, great strategy. Have you ever noticed how items expand to fill the size of the container? My very first house was 750 square feet. My house now is about 3,500 square feet. The same thing just keeps happening. We get a bigger house and we buy more stuff to fill it all up, which is why things tend to just disappear from my house periodically when mama goes on a purging spree and stuff gets taken to goodwill. Don't tell my husband. And the same thing happens with projects. If you decide that you need to update a blog post on your website and you give yourself half an hour to do it, or you can give yourself two hours to do it, it's gonna take you exactly the amount of time that you gave yourself to do it. So why not give yourself a shorter window of time? It will still get done and it will still be good enough, but it's only gonna take you one fourth the amount of time because you decided to be focused and work on that one thing without any distractions. Now, how are you going to block off meeting with clients? Well, what if you block off chunks of time each day when you are available for meeting with clients, showings, listing presentations, things of that nature? You can block off those hours on your calendar and tell clients that those are the hours when you're available to meet with them. You do not need to let your clients run you ragged. If you've been telling yourself that you need to jump when your clients snap their fingers, that is just a story that you're telling yourself. And I would like to challenge you to explore that line of thinking and ask yourself why you feel that being a doormat to your clients is a valuable character trait. Do you really want clients who expect you to be at their beck and call? What if you felt valued because you were amazing at your job? You educated them on every detail of the transaction so that when the inevitable problem popped up, it didn't become an emergency that turns into a three alarm fire and is going to derail the entire thing. We cannot control what happens, but we can control how we react and our clients take their cues from us. If I freak out, they're going to freak out. But if I'm calm and confident, and I'm sure that it's all gonna work out in the end, then they probably calm down too. So you've time blocked everything on your calendar all week long, and when you were working on it, it got your undivided attention, you turned off notifications one by one, and you checked those things off your to-do list. At the end of the week, you sit down, you look at your list, and I bet 99% of those things got done. How would that make you feel? You'd feel like a total rock star, right? You're like, dang, I am so productive. I got this. I am on fire. And the best part about that is that now when you go to take your personal time off to relax, to be with your friends, do hobbies, spend it with your family, you don't feel like you've got to run back to the office because you're so behind on so many other things. This method of calendaring has truly been life-changing for me. Did you know that I have a digital planner specifically designed to help you with all of this? It's a digital file that you can open on your tablet. I use it on my iPad and I write with my Apple Pencil, but it will also work on Remarkable and on Android devices as well. So if you need help getting your time back, I encourage you to grab a copy of my digital planner.